Dallas Wings announced their final 12 roster after making a few more cuts to the team. I have a few issues. I have a few questions. I have a few concerns. And it's not really with the Dallas Wings. It's more with the WNBA in general. Let's get right into it. Thank you so much for joining us on DopeContent.com as we hit you with another Dallas Wings update here on the website as well if you're on youtube you can now watch them on youtube because we have now released these on youtube as well so thank you so much for joining no matter if you're on the website or youtube your love is definitely appreciated thank you now let's get into it the dallas wings make a few more cuts and uh you know i just have a few questions i have a few concerns once again and i have some some issues just some just some minor issues with the wnba in general let's start off with the wings cutting the number 11 overall pick abby myers and then today it was announced that they cut former first round overall pick former first overall pick in general from the 2021 draft charlie collier and then backup center kalani brown so all of these people are cut and this this I just have an issue with the amount of players that I see get cut in this short amount of time. And if we want to go through so far what I know, let's give you a list of people that has been cut from this year's draft alone. The number 11 pick, once again, Abby Myers from the Dallas Wings cut. The number 17th overall pick, Ladazia Williams cut. The number 20th overall pick, Alina, is it Tosinski? I don't want to. I don't, I'm probably saying that wrong. Number 20, 20th overall pick cut. Number twenty second overall pick Alexis Morris cut. The, the number twenty fourth overall pick Bria Bill cut. The number twenty six overall pick Monika. I don't know how to say her last name at all. I'm not even gonna try that one. <laughs> She's cut. The number twenty seven overall pick Destiny Harden is cut. All these players are cut. Bruh. What chances are they getting to show that they can play and keep up with the WNBA players and the veterans? Because once you get drafted, you have about two and a half to three weeks to show what you can do, and then you get two preseason games. And in those two preseason games, a lot of these teams are playing their starters and playing their veterans because they're trying to build chemistry with their new rosters. So you really don't even get a chance to play in the preseason games like that. I know for a fact the Dallas Wings players didn't get that much of a chance because I watched, I was at the first game and I watched the second game. The starters played a lot of minutes. They, they played a lot of minutes because they're trying to build chemistry. It's a lot of player movement that happened this offseason. So you got all these teams trying to build chemistry with each other because it's only two games and then it's the start of the season. It's only two games and then it's the start of the season. So, yeah, a lot of these teams are like – well, I got to see what my team is. We only got two games to see what this new roster is. So we're going to play our starters. We're going to play the, the six women and, and the six, seven, eight people off the bench. And then everybody else, you just get in where you fit in. That's all they have. They have two and a half to three weeks and two preseason games that they might not even play in to show what they can do. Bruh. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair at all. So a couple of things that I think should happen, and I, I know it's way easier said than done, you know, when you think about financials and all that stuff. Like, it's a lot of, but just some ideas, right? If you're not going to expand the WNBA and add at least two more teams, at least two more teams, that's 24 more roster spots right there if you add just two more. But if you can't do that because of whatever reason, you know, um, think about doing a, a WNBA G League. Let's see if you can send those players there and see if they could work their way back up. Probably can't do that either because of financial reasons, right? All right, so let's stick to the easiest one. How about extend the preseason at least to four games and get these women a, enough time to actually get in the system and show what they can do versus – Two and a half weeks, two preseason games they might not play, and that's it. Bruh. These are just some suggestions. I know it's easier said than done, but something has to change because there's too many players that's getting drafted 
and not getting a fair chance to even show what they can do. I remember everybody was still mad about Tia Cooper getting cut when she got cut. She's like, man, she just got here. You know, but at least Tia got a chance to play during the season, the 2020 season, right, before she got cut. But it's just, it's it's not enough roster spots in the league for these players. And you get, you're doing three rounds of drafting every year. Why are we drafting three rounds when you know it's only 12 players on each roster that can make it and it's not that many teams? What, what are we doing? What are we doing? Especially when it's only two preseason games and you get a two and a half, three weeks to go from your dorm packing your stuff to practice. That's not enough time. That's not enough time. I'm sorry. NBA players can't figure out who their rookies are in that short amount of time. They have summer league and all that stuff to figure them out. And even sometimes then, that's still not enough. Like, sometimes they have to go through summer league and a full rookie season, and then we start figuring out, oh, okay, this player can maybe do this and maybe do that. So, I mean, it's, I don't think it's fair that it's like that for the WNBA, but, I mean, I guess it is what it is for now. It's crazy. Now, when we get to the Dallas Wings, let's go over their draft picks, right? So since 2021, Dallas Wings have drafted 12 players. Right now, only five of them are still on the roster. Bruh. They drafted five players this year, and only two of them are available to play right now. Bruh. You know, due to injuries and things like that, and then a couple of them being, you know, released. So it's just crazy. Let's go over this roster for the Dallas Wings. You got Veronica Burden. Crystal Dangerfield, Diamond DeShields, who I was excited to see. I couldn't wait to see her, but she's injured. She has a knee injury, and she might be gone for majority of the season. Bruh. So, Jasmine Dickey, guard, she made it. Yeah, you know, I'm, she, I don't know if she should have made it over Abby Myers. I don't know. I'm kind of questioning that pick, but hey, congrats to Gabby. Um, Natasha Howard, Ashley Jones. Awakuya, Lou Lopez, who's the draft pick out of Connecticut, guard. I couldn't wait to see her either, but she's going to miss majority of the season. She's going to miss six to eight weeks because she has a knee injury as well. Bruh. Man, that's tough. That's tough. Tiara McCowan, of course, Arike Agumbawale, Maddie Segris, and Satu Sabley, the unicorn, all finished the 12-man 12 12 roster for Dallas Wings. So shout out to these ladies. As far as my excitement for the year, it's, it's not the same as it was two weeks ago, mainly because one of your major players, Diamond DeShields, is going to miss majority of the season. Lou Lopez is going to miss majority of the season. Um, those are two players I was expecting to do some things this year. Lou off the bench, Diamond DeShields with her defense and shot making. I thought I was ready to see him. I couldn't wait to see him. Um, as far as Charlie Collier and Kalani Brown, I figured they would have kept one of the two, just considering that Satu has been injured, you know, injury prone. And God forbid that she gets injured this year, because you go from one of the deepest front courts to all of a sudden having four players taking up these two spots. And if Satu gets injured again, you got three players rotating in these two spots. So that makes me nervous alone. Satu is coming in healthy for the first time that I can remember. So that's great to see. And I hope she stays healthy the whole season because a healthy Satu Sabley is a beast and will be a huge factor for this Dallas Wings team this year moving forward. But uh, that's it, man. That's that's the weekly update for the Dallas Wings. They take on the Atlanta Dream and former Dallas Wings, Alicia Gray, coming in this Saturday at noon on ABC. I can't wait to see Alicia Gray back in this arena. They gave Izzy... Um, Isabella Harrison, a great ovation during the preseason game when they played Chicago here in Arlington. So I'm expecting the same for um, Alicia Gray. I'm expecting the same reaction, if not a bigger reaction. Alicia was really loved here. That was one of my favorite players. So I say, uh, yeah, that was one of my favorite players. So hopefully she gets that same love here from the Wings um, fans. I got the heat because I'm over here trying to hold these heat cups here. <laughs> But we'll see what happened, man. My excitement coming out the gate is not what it was two weeks ago. So we drafted a couple players, a couple of them injured, and then we got some of our star players getting injured before the season even starts. So I'm a little nervous. I feel like we'll beat Atlanta. We should beat Atlanta. 
in a home opener Saturday, but just overall coming out the gate, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. This team is still talented and deep. Natasha Howard, Enrique Agumbawali, Satu Sabli, and Tierra McCown ain't no joke. That's that's a good list to still have, right? And then Dangerfield and uh, Victoria. I mean, that's that's a good list. It's a good list, but the WNBA, it's a lot of good players on a lot of good teams. That's why it's another reason why it's so hard for these rookies to come in and take a spot. These players are in the league for a reason. But I feel like WNBA really needs to figure something out. It's either expand, extend the preseason, or work on getting the G League for the WNBA. Those are my suggestions. Once again, these are way easier said than done. I'm a guy sitting in my garage studio throwing these suggestions out like it's something you could do. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand. I understand, WNBA, that it's not something you could just do. You got to think about a lot. When it comes to expanding, you got to think about the cities and the markets that you want to go to. And again, the finance. Like, do you hit up San Antonio again? Even though San Antonio was a team before and they're, they're no longer in the WNBA. But at the same time, San Antonio will support because they support the Brahmas, XFL team. They were bad. All they have is the Brahmas and the Spurs. San Antonio is a good sports city. Do you try to go back to, like, Oklahoma, but this time go to OKC and try to, you know, appeal to that fan base versus going to Tulsa? I mean, it's, it's do you try to go back to a big market? You know, do you try to go back to Houston? Houston has a huge legacy there with the Houston Comets. So do you try to go back to Houston? Play, I mean, it's a lot to think about when it comes to expanding. So I think the easiest route will be um, probably extending the preseason, giving these ladies more time to really adjust to the speed of the league and show what they can do. Because two and a half weeks, three weeks, and two preseason games is just not enough. I'm sorry. It's not enough to show what you can do, especially when you're in a whole new environment. It's just it's not enough. It's not enough. So, but I think Dallas, my prediction, I think Dallas will beat Atlanta this Saturday. Get off to a one over start. And we'll see from there. I don't know what they can do on the roster. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say I know exactly how the injuries work as far as replacing injured players. I don't know. I've never really had to dig that deep into the WNBA as far as covering the Dallas Wings. Because when Satu gets hurt, she just sits out until she comes back. So I don't I don't remember them ever like putting her on hour and replacing her roster spot until she came back. So uh we'll see, man. But thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. If you're on dopecontent.com, make sure you scroll down on the main page, type your email in, subscribe to stay up to date to dopecontent.com as we continue to drop these Dallas Wings media updates. Uh we do the Texas Rangers, we do the Dallas Mavericks, the Cowboys, we do wrestling, we do sports overall, the Dope Sports Podcast, we got music and entertainment as well, so stay up to date, and put your email in dopecontent.com, we don't do spam emails or nothing like that, I personally send out the emails, so no spam, none of that is coming, stay up to date with our articles, we're starting to do, add articles to the website and everything, so man, um, and if you're on YouTube, much love to you man, much support to you. And thank you for everything that you guys have done. Everybody that's donating to the website and donating to the PayPal and, and the cash app and all that. Much love to y'all. And until next time, I am out. Let's go. Hey. <laughs>